What is happening guys, it's Spruce Goose here, and this is an important video because defense in Madden 22 is possibly the most difficult it's been in the entire history of the game, and so if you want to win more Madden games, then it is crucial this year more than ever before that you truly understand all the different adjustments you have on the defensive side of the ball. So in this video, I'm going to break down all the defensive adjustments in Madden into three categories, basic, intermediate, and advanced, and go through each adjustment in the entire game and show you how you can use them to help you win more Madden games. Now I know this video isn't as exciting or clickbaity as best splits in Madden 22 or destroy cover four, but I do think this video is extremely important because these defensive adjustments are the tools on your tool belt that you will use to build your defensive schemes. Understanding these will allow you to make your own adjustments on the fly rather than just relying on specific setups that you learned in an ebook or a YouTube video. So with that said, let's go ahead and get started with the complete guide to defensive adjustments in Madden 22. So guys, we are starting off with the basic adjustments and some of you may know most or all these things. And if you do, that's awesome. This will be a great refresher. And if you don't, there's nothing wrong with that. You're gonna learn some new things today, which is also awesome. So let's get right into it. And the first adjustments we're doing is the defensive line. So if I press left on the D-pad, it's gonna pull up our D-line adjustments menu. And you see that we have four options for our left stick and four options for our right stick. And then some stuff going on at the bottom. And let's just start with the stick options. And you see on the left side, it says shift D line. Well, this is gonna do exactly what we'd expect it to do. If I press my left stick to the left, it's gonna shift my D line to the left. If I press left on the D pad again, and then I press right on the left stick, it's gonna shift my D line to the right. If I press up, it's gonna spread my guys out. And if I press down, it's gonna pinch my guys in. So far, so good. On the right side, we have point of attack. What this is doing, this is telling my D-line players the direction I want them to crash on the snap. And so if I say slant left, and there's a little bit of a glitch in practice mode right now where the, the slants are not always showing up, but let's just, just look at the play art of our D-line. You see how they're kind of going to the left with the, the little red lines coming out of them? That is because I put them on a slant left assignment. If I go ahead and press left on the D-pad and then right on the the stick you can see now that they're slanting to the right fortunately it's working this time sometimes the player is a little glitched out i'm glad it's working right now same thing we can press up on the right stick and now they're kind of slanting outside and down the right stick they are slanting inside so far so good and then we have the left trigger or l2 we'll just cancel out whatever shift we had and it kind of just puts them back on whatever their default is which is going to just be to rush just straight down and not really pinched or shifted left right or anything like that and so those are our D-line adjustments. We will come back to quick adjust later, but those are the basic D-line adjustments. Let's move to linebackers. And fortunately, it's gonna be somewhat similar. I'm gonna press right on the D-pad this time, and it brings up a very similar looking menu. And you see on the left side, we get our same options, left, right, spread, pinch. And so you can see that I press left and we all shifted to the left, right, we shift to the right, down, we pinch in. And in some formations, they're kind of naturally already pinched in. And see, I'm pinching and spreading right now. Not a whole lot is happening in this case, but you guys did see that left and right uh, was having an impact. And so uh, it definitely varies. You know, I can go ahead and clear the shift again. They kind of move back, uh, but you can always uh, shift them as needed. And it looks like if I uh, don't press anything for too long, they're just gonna hike the ball because I don't have a controller on the offensive side. That's okay. And so where you'd want to use this is like, for example, if you have a quarterback who's rolling out a lot, your opponent's rolling out a lot, uh, maybe they have a skate artist and they're rolling around your QB contains. If you if you spread those D line or the not the D linemen, the linebackers out, it can help them just get a little bit more leverage on the outside, keep the quarterback in the pocket a little bit better, really make him have to run really far around if he's gonna try and outrun that contain, which is possible right now, at least in Mutt, uh, with Vince Young with the skate artist, but that's getting a little bit sidetracked. Uh, those are our D-line adjustments, or sorry, our linebacker adjustments for shifting them in certain directions. Now, on the right side, you can see that we have four different adjustments with the right stick, and that is left linebacker blitz, right linebacker blitz, zone all, or blitz all. So I would say the most common one you're gonna use is gonna be the blitz all. And so let's initially look at our linebacker assignments. So you see that like I have my user is already on a blitz, but I have two other guys. This guy is on a zone assignment and this guy's on a zone assignment. Well, if I press right on the D-pad and then down on the right stick, now we're all on 
blitz assignments, but you can also do it individually with the other options on the menu. So you see right outside linebacker blitz. So you could just tell the right side to blitz. And it's kind of weird because the right outside linebacker is on our left. So that's kind of unintuitive. Same thing. We could say left outside linebacker blitz, and it's going to be our stick to the left, but it really is the linebacker on the right side. I'm not going to recommend using those because as you may have seen, I'm doing assignments with quick adjustments. That's going to be later on in the video. There are better ways to do these, in my opinion, than using left outside linebacker blitz and right outside linebacker blitz. I'm not going to recommend that. I think that the zone all or the blitz all are the ones you're going to be using the most. And so you know, real quick, let's just say you're all on a blitz assignment as the name would imply. Oh, I put them on zones as the name would imply. If you just do zone all right on the D pad up on the right stick. Now everyone is playing hook curls. I don't really ever do zone all situationally. You definitely could like if you have everyone blitzing and your opponent makes some kind of adjustment and you just go, oh my gosh, the middle is going to be completely open. This blitz is not coming in. Let's just zone everybody. You could very quickly just hit right on the D-pad, up on the right stick, and now you've got some guys covering the middle of the field. And so those are our linebacker assignment adjustments. And just, I guess a little preview is that in the defensive scheme, I'm going to be showing you guys in the next week or two, uh, we are definitely going to be utilizing the blitz all linebackers adjustments. So that's definitely one uh, to really practice, really get ingrained and have it be second nature for you. And so moving on, let's look at coverage adjustments. And so I'm going to press Y on Xbox or triangle on PlayStation. And we have four options again for our left stick and four options for our right stick. And so on the left side, uh, the top and bottom options here are probably the ones you're most familiar with. And so if you press up on the left stick, it's going to give cushion. It backs everyone off. This is for when you don't want to give up a deep touchdown. You say, take whatever you want underneath but let's just scooch everyone back and not give up anything over the top. Now the opposite of that, if I press Y and then down on the left stick, we are going to press. And obviously that's gonna bring everyone up. We are going to be pressing and I would not recommend pressing right now in next gen Madden 22, at least as of uh, September 13th when I'm recording this video. Right now, if you press any streak from one of those receivers, it's gonna blow right by you for one play touchdown. So I would not recommend pressing at least currently on next gen Madden 22. Now, uh, we also have, if I press Y again, we have show blitz. Now in this formation, show blitz does not actually change the alignment at all. And it, it's very similar to press. It's gonna bring your uh, defenders up, make it look like you're blitzing. So you could be in, in some kind of max coverage setup, but then you wanna show blitz. And, and right now there's, it's just kind of bringing everyone up very similar to press in certain formations maybe this safety will come up here and maybe this safety will come right here uh it definitely depends on the formation obviously here in uh, nickel 335 wide they were not really reacting much i'm gonna go ahead and just let the computer run a play so that we can uh, kind of reset the defense but show blitz and press very similar alignment wise press will make your guys actually press and like i said i don't recommend pressing right now in general i would not bother uh, bringing those cornerbacks up. You don't want to give up any uh, deep touchdowns right now. Now, the final adjustment is to move our left stick to the right, and that is base align. And so what base align is, is it's going to uh, put all your defenders in, say, the default alignment of the play. Like if you were to just line up in 335 wide, independent of where the receivers or tight ends or running backs are on the field, that would be base align. And so actually what I want to do guys is I want to put the offense in a different play so I can show you exactly what base align is going to do. And so let's go ahead and call like a cover two man on defense and let's put the defense in a trips tight end offset. So look at our alignment now. Do you see how our defensive alignment is so much different from what we had before, even though this is the same formation? They're, the guys in man coverage are lining up in front of the guys they are covering which makes sense because it's man coverage. But if I base the line, so if I press wire triangle and then right on the left stick, we go back to the default formation. This is what I mean when I said they are aligned uh, independent of where the offense is. And so you guys can see that for man coverage, this is probably not very effective because just look how far away our defenders are from the guys they are 
a sign to cover man on man. Now, what can be confusing for your opponent on offense is if they see this alignment, they're going to assume that it's a zone coverage. And so situationally, you could play man coverage base aligned and it might really confuse your opponent. But the reality is they're probably going to find someone open. Like look at number 13 in the slot. If he just runs an out route, no one's going to be really close to covering him because my linebacker covering him is starting from the very middle of the field. And so it could work, but most of the time I'm going to recommend if you mess around with baseline is you run a zone coverage out of baseline because that's going to look a lot more natural. If I go ahead and go Mike Blitz 3 and baseline, you can see that uh, it, it's a lot uh, less funky looking. And now the opposite of baseline is also on our coverage adjustments menu. And so if I press Y, you can see that in the lower right, we actually have the man align button. And so if I press man align, you can see that this is exactly the opposite of what we just did with baseline. And so now we are aligning with their formation, regardless of what our assignments actually are. And so this is a way that you could make your opponent think that you're running man coverage when actually you're running zone coverage. Again, it's a little sketch because look at look at this uh, corner. He's supposed to cover the outside third on the right side. Well, what if what if this tight end is is on a corner route? Uh, this guy might not be able to get back there to actually cover his zone. And so again, situationally, it might confuse your opponent. But the reality is that your prize is going to be taking your guys out of where they're supposed to be. And so unless you have very specific setups, again, from like an ebook or a YouTube video or something, I just stick with default alignment. I do not mess around with man alignment or base alignment. I just stick with default and it's worked out decently well for me. I'm not going to say it's the best. I know that there's definitely an argument, if anything, for probably base alignment because I just think that man coverage is just pretty tough right now. And so I think most people are running zones. And I think that if you're base aligned, then no one will ever be able to tell uh, exactly which zone you're in. So if there's one of these to use, I would use base alignment. But I think that for most people, you can absolutely have a solid defense with just the default alignment. Uh, if you start messing around too much with baseline and man align, and you don't know what you're doing, uh, you can definitely get yourself into some trouble. And so moving on to the rest of the coverage adjustments, I press wire triangle again, and we have more options on the right side. We have over top, underneath, inside and outside. And so let's talk about over top and underneath. And I'm going to go back to man coverage for that to keep it simple. Let's say I was pressing, even though I know I just said not to press. If I shade over the top, so I press wire triangle and press up on the right stick, that means that even though we're pressed, our guys are going to uh, make sure they don't give up anything over the top, anything deep, like a streak or something, unless they're just not fast enough. But even though you are pressing, if you shade over the top, your cornerbacks will not try to jam the receiver at the line. They will still drop back straight off the line and they will prioritize not giving up anything over the top. Now, if you shade underneath, so wire triangle and down the right stick, they will jam at the line. And this is very risky if you don't have a uh, zone help over the top, because when you shade underneath, you might get a great press win and completely take that receiver out of the play for a second or two but you might get a press loss and the receiver will just blow right by you. And now all of a sudden you have a receiver streaking completely free down the field. And like I said, if you don't have some, some help over the top, it's going to be a bad time for you. And so there was a meta last year in Madden 21 where people would just, just run cover two man shaded underneath. And basically the corners would jam the receivers at the line. And if the receiver did get a win, there was help over the top by the two safeties deep. You can't really run that right now because deep blues are really bad. And so maybe later in the year that can make a comeback. At the moment, that's not really a meta that I'm seeing online right now. And now let's talk about the other adjustments on the right stick, which are shade inside and shade outside. And these sort of work. They don't quite work as well as I'd like them to. But the idea behind shade inside or shade outside, as the names would imply, is if I shade inside, so if I press left on my right stick, then in man coverage, uh, any slants or in routes or in breaking routes like that, my cornerbacks would prioritize guarding those to the inside and they would give up things to the outside. In reality, 
they can still sometimes get beat to the inside. It's not like if you shade inside, slant routes are completely shut down. They might play a little bit tighter, but depending on the speed of the receiver and the speed of the cornerback and whether the receiver has like a route running ability, they can absolutely still win to the inside, even if you shade inside. So keep that in mind. It can help. It can make the coverage tighter, but it's not like, oh, I guess correctly on the shade inside and I took him out of the play. It doesn't really work like that. Uh, same thing with shade outside. If you're expecting outbreaking routes, go ahead and press wire triangle and right on the D-pad. And you can actually see, if you look at the outside cornerback on Devontae Adams, when I shade inside or shade outside, so that's shade inside, he moved a couple yards inside. I shade outside. Now he moved a couple yards outside. It can make a difference, but again, you can still get beat to the outside even when you shade outside. And so just keep that in mind. You still want to put zone help when you're in man coverage. You still want to try and give some zone support to both the inside and the outside when possible because the shading inside outside is not enough to uh, shut down routes, even if you correctly guess which way those routes are going to break and do the shading uh, to match that. So the other thing we need to go over with shading is actually going to be back with the uh, shading over top and underneath, but this time we're going to do it with zone coverage. And so I'm going to go back to Mike Blitz 3 and What's really interesting is that shading underneath will change purple zones into blue zones. And so if I press wire triangle and I shade underneath, you can see that now those blue zones have turned from curl flats into hard flats. And so a hard flat, if you have your uh, coaching adjustment zone drop set to default, a hard flat will just play uh, the flats at about maybe five yards depth and take away just anything down there. They will not go further you know deep downfield for any reason now if you shade back up after you've already got your hard flats on the field so wire triangle again shade over the top those hard flats now turn into cloud flats and so those cloud flats will actually get some drop on them again if you have your zone drop set to default we'll talk about zone drops in just a second as well but the cloud flats uh will start off at the line but they will uh drop back you know probably about like 15 20 yards of depth if there is a receiver to bring them back. And so you can uh, use shading underneath and over the top to actually manipulate your zones as well. Now, if you had purples, once you shade underneath or over the top, you will not get purples back. You can only shade underneath to turn your cloud flats into blues or your hard flats into cloud flats by shading over the top. If you wanna get those purples back, you gotta just call the play again. So I'm gonna call Mike Blitz three again. And uh, practice mode is a little bit glitched. So even though I called it again, it didn't give me the original play. We're gonna let it run through one time and then I'll call it again. Uh, just practice mode, it's got all this weird stuff going on. Uh, but let's go ahead and I'm gonna call Mike Blitz three. And now we have our purples, black, our seam flats and on defaults. This is, the point of this video is not really how all the zones work. That could be a whole nother video. So if you guys want a whole nother video on how every individual zone plays, definitely let me know. Right now you just gotta know, uh, well I was calling them curl flats, they're actually seam flats. Again, let's not get into that right now. These are more just the actual adjustments. Uh, but if you want to turn the scene flats into blues, you could shade underneath or over the top. But once you do that, you're not getting the purples back. So right here, I shade over the top. Oh, I, I apologize. It doesn't turn into blues. It, shade over the top on the scene flats turns them into curl flats. Shade underneath on whether it's a curl flat or a scene flat. Shade underneath turns them into hard flats. And once they're blues, they will always be hard flats or cloud flats. And so that's probably a good time to segment into the second part of the video, intermediate adjustments. So if you just skipped ahead to here, you might want to go ahead and watch the last minute or two because the stuff we're talking about with turning purples into blues and uh, blues into different blues probably falls into the intermediate category. But we are in intermediate adjustments right now. And the primary thing we need to look at for this is going to be the individual adjustments of the different players on the field. And so if I go around to say my safety right here, he has individual adjustments. And if I press A on Xbox or X on PlayStation, you can see that we get eight different adjustments that we can put him on. We can press up on the left stick and put him in a deep half, which as the name would imply, he's gonna cover deep and he's gonna cover half the field. At the time of this recording, deep halves are awful in Madden 22. They cannot play very much, but in theory, he should play deep and he should play half of the field. Uh, we can put him on an inside third. If I press left on the left stick, he's just going to play the deep middle, pretty straightforward. And those 
work decently well right now. We can press right on the left stick to put him in a curl flat. And if, you know, again, I'm not going to get into all the details of how the zones play. That's just for a different video. If you guys want to see another video on that. Uh, but the curl flat is going to just play at a medium depth. Or if you have zone drop set, then this will play at whatever depth you set it. And this is probably a good time to interject and talk about uh, coaching adjustment zone drops. And I cannot show you in practice mode because coaching adjustments are not in practice mode. But I will use screenshots right now. And what you can do with zone drops is you can set two different drops. Well, you can set three different drops. You can set the drop depth of your yellows, your blues, and your purples. And so your yellows are going to be your vert hooks, your hook curls, and your three wrecks, things like that. Your purples are going to be your curl flats and your seam flats. And your blues are going to be your hard flats, your cloud flats, and your soft squats. And so if you set zone drops for any of those, the zone drops will override any logic of the zone that would be typically built in if you have it on default. So like a soft squat, a soft squat will man match on a route going deep from their side of the field. And so even though that looks like a blue, that's definitely not playing like a hard flat would, even though at the glance on a play art, you'd be like, oh, it's a just a, a blue flat. And so you definitely would want to pay attention, typically, if you're on uh, default settings, what particular flats are out there. But if you have zone drop set, it does not matter. A hard flat, a cloud flat, and a soft squat in a 25-yard zone drop are going to play exactly the same. They're just going to drop back to 25 yards of depth and just sit there and guard whatever comes near them. I was going to say comes into their zone. Really, they don't react too much unless something's like right next to them. But that is how zone drops work. What I typically do is I have my purples set to five and I have my blues set to 20 or 25. And you want to be adjusting those throughout the game. And so if your opponent is finding, uh, you know, some soft spots kind of over the fives and under the 20s, Maybe you change those fives up to tens. Maybe you change those 20s down to 15s. Uh, but you can play with those throughout the game to adjust the depth that your defenders will be dropping when you have guys in uh, purple flats and blue flats. And so, again, just to, just to be clear, uh, if I had a purple flat with a zone drop set to five yards, even if he starts out way back here at the safety position, even though the play art is showing him playing uh, maybe 10 to 20 yards deep, if this is a five yard zone at the snap, he's going to come down and play the five yard flat. He's going to play at whatever depth I tell him to play at. And then same thing with my blues over here, regardless of whether it's a cloud flat, whether it's a hard flat, if I have a zone drop of 25 set at the snap, even though the player is right here, he's going to drop way back and he's going to cover at 25 yards depth from the line of scrimmage. And so those are very important to understand. I mostly play with the zone drops on. I know that there's some defensive schemes out there right now that play on default, and that's especially important if you are playing match coverages. Your zone drops will override any match logic. Like I said, it's just going to play a typical drop zone if you have zone drops on. And so if you want to play match, uh, which can be good, but it can be really risky because it's really easy to break match. If you want to play match coverages, then you want to keep these on default. I typically, like I said, I have my purples at five and my blues at 20. So with that out of the way, hopefully these quick adjustments that we're doing, not quick adjustments, but individual adjustments will make a little bit more sense. So going back to my safety whitehead right here, when I press A and I've got all these adjustments, if I've got him out here and I say, I'm worried about the running back going out on a flat route, I want him to cover the flat. I could go to whitehead. I could press A and bring up the menu, or uh, A on Xbox, X on PlayStation. I can pull up this menu, I can press right on the left stick, and now he's in a curl flat. And so now at the snap, again, like I said before, he's gonna come way down here, he's gonna cover a five yard flat, and hopefully be able to make a play if the running back goes out on a flat route. And so uh, going through more uh, options here, if we do down on the left stick, he's gonna play a hook curl, Hook curls will typically just kind of play where the play art shows unless you change their drop depth in your coaching adjustments. Uh, I don't know how far you get these to drop, but you could probably get it up to at least 20. And so, you know, a five yard hook curl, you'd have him be playing right here and 20, you'd have him kind of playing back here. Uh, so that's pretty straightforward. On the right side, this is where things can get 
pretty interesting. The simple one's going to be down on the right stick, puts him on a blitz assignment. So that's either if you want him to go in and blitz, or oftentimes people will put a blitz assignment on if they're going to be using that player. I'll be honest, I haven't noticed a big difference this year between using on a blitz assignment and using in a zone assignment. Last year, you had to be in a blitz assignment to get the most like uh, change of direction and speed out of your player that you were using. This year, I don't really think it matters, but I still put him on a blitz assignment anyway, because that's just like what I'm used to. I also like having him on a blitz assignment because like, let's say the quarterback uh, rolls out. I'm kind of taking my user this way with him. So the, the quarterback was like rolling out to the right. I could click off of my original user if, and hope to like click onto a different defender uh, who's near like where the ball is being thrown. And this defender would still like pursue the quarterback. And there have been cases where I never put my user on a blitz assignment. So let's say he was in a zone. Let's say the quarterback was, was going to roll out. I would like try to send him in. I would, I would get him sprinting in, click off, hoping to take control of like someone over here and try to make a play in case, you know, my opponent threw cross body. And instead of running in after the quarterback, because this guy was in a zone assignment, he would go in. And the moment that I clicked off, he would just back right up instead of going after the quarterback. And so I like having him in a blitz assignment. So that if I need to click off of him, he will go after the quarterback. So let's go through more adjustments. We have inside quarter, which is right on the right stick. And so you guys can see right there, it's just going to cover one quarter of the field. So if we put everybody on inside quarters and so, oh gosh, so we're going to have to go through the, the other guys in a sec. But if you guys can see that if you want to put everyone on quarters, uh, you'd have a nice little cover four setup right there. Um, cover four is a little risky this year. Uh, bombing cover four is very easy. I did a whole video on how to destroy cover four. Uh, so I will try to link that at the end of the video. And so definitely go check that out if you're having trouble against cover four. And then of course we have QB spy. Pretty straightforward, I think. Uh, if the quarterback uh, rolls or scrambles, he's gonna kind of just match him. Uh, probably very good to start putting QB spies on the field. Cause I know in Mutt, like I said, Vince Young is the first escape bars quarterback. He is kind of uh, running all over people. He's running around QB contains. And so uh, having a spy on the field might be important. And real quickly, let's interject uh, one of the basic tips. Sorry, we're all over the place because I mentioned QB contains. Uh, pressing RB or R1. Well, it's going to run through the play now. Let's just let it run out. But if you press RB or R1, it's going to pull up other uh, another menu. And size is all over the place, guys. My bad. If you press RB or R1, it's going to have more options right here, which we will get to in a little bit. Uh, but QB contain, you're going to press RB again. So you basically double tap RB or double tap R1. It'll put your guys on QB contain. You can see that the contain assignments are, are right here and right here. And in theory, as long as they're working like they're supposed to, they will keep outside leverage. They will not let the, let the quarterback uh, scramble outside of those contains. Now guys, just a quick interjection. When I was editing this video, I realized I never went back and showed you the rest of the options on that menu we pulled up with RB or R1. So let's go ahead and look at those right now. And so on the left side, we are gonna get some very similar type of adjustments that we saw with say our D linemen and our linebackers in that moving our left stick to the left will uh, shift left. And in this case, we are shifting the entire defense to the left instead of just a particular position group. And so if I press RB or R1 and press right on the stick, we are now going to shift our whole defense to the right. So you can see that both the linebackers and the D-line are moving to the right. And then, like you can probably expect, if we press up on the left stick, we're going to spread the entire defense. And then pressing down is going to pinch the entire defense. And so that's basically like pinching your D-line, pinching your linebackers, and pressing your uh, coverage. So be careful when you pinch. Like I said before, guys, if you press you're at high risk of giving up uh, streaks for one play touchdowns, but that's what pinching is going to do uh, with all those options on the left side. Now on the right side, the guess play, this is actually very important. And so if we look at the first option, it is going to be right stick up. So that is called pass commit is what you'll probably hear a lot of people say if you're watching YouTube videos or eBooks, they will call this pass commit. So you're pressing RB or R1 and then up on the right stick. And so you are basically telling your defense that you think it's going to be a pass play. And it does two things. It one, makes your defenders play just a little bit better in pass coverage. Man coverage might play just a little tighter. Zones might uh, react just a little bit quicker. But the downside is they will play worse against the run. 
And so if I had two controllers, what I would show you right now is that like at the snap, if I pass commit, then all our defenders are gonna, they're, like their first step is gonna be back. All our defenders first step is gonna be back when you pass commit because they are expecting a pass. And so if your opponent ends up running against a pass commit, then you are at higher risk of giving up a lot of yards on that run play. That's just the risk that you take if you guess that it's gonna be a pass and it ends up being a run. Now, the flip side, the opposite of pass commit is going to be our run commits. And we have three run commit options, which are run left, run right, and run middle. You have to be very careful with these because if you run commit, you are setting the entire defense after uh, what you think is gonna be a run play. So I'm gonna go ahead and run commit middle right now. And so it doesn't show on the play art, but what you'll see guys is that once the computer snaps the ball, my entire defense, all 11 players, ran in to go after the run. And so you have to be extremely careful with run committing. I almost never run commit, even when I think it's gonna be a run play, because honestly, for whatever reason, run committing a lot of times does not even help you guard the run. I know that sounds counterintuitive. I know it seems like if you run commit and having all 11 guys get in there, uh, it should stop the run pretty well. What typically happens is, especially if you say like run up the middle, you'll get so many guys kind of trapped on the inside trapped in the middle that if it ends up being like a run to the outside then there's not any defenders out there to get the ball carrier so just be extremely careful run committing honestly i would just use pass commit and i pass commit a decent bit i'm willing to take the risk of possibly giving up a slightly better run to get better uh pass coverage from my defenders and that's especially because in madden 22 most people are passing the ball on almost every single down and so i think that pass committing is absolutely worth it. Now at the bottom, we have option quarterback, option running back, and QB contain. That option quarterback and option running back, I wouldn't worry about those. That's only really going to apply if, say in your coaching adjustments, you put your option defense on conservative, which is what I would always recommend. And in that case, it's gonna have your uh, defender who happens to be the, be the read key on an option play. He is going to let the running back go and he's gonna guard the quarterback. And typically that's the smart move because uh, if you don't play the quarterback, you're susceptible to giving up some really huge run plays. But let's say that on a particular play while you were on option defense conservative, you decided that you wanted your read key to actually play the quarterback. Then you could go to this adjustment right here and say option quarterback to override that option defense conservative setting that you have in your coaching adjustments. I have never used this once. I don't know anyone who's ever really used this, uh, but it is there if you want it. And the final one is going to be QB contained that we just talked about. And that is an extremely valuable one right now for all these scrambling quarterbacks. So again, you're just going to press RB or R1, bring up this menu, press RB or R1 again for the QB contain. Or once you get used to it with that muscle memory, you're just going to double tap that button really fast to put your QB contains on. Anyway, back to the the individual adjustments for Mr. Whitehead right here. I press A again, and you can see that the final option is man coverage. And so if I press up on the right stick, what's gonna happen is it's gonna bring up the icons for all the players on the defense or on the offense. And so if I go ahead and select the tight end, which is A, you can see that now we are in a man assignment with Mr. Whitehead, which isn't the best thing because we already have someone else in a man assignment on him. But then maybe I'd say, oh, I want Shaq Barrett. Uh, maybe over on the curl flat and I want whitehead in man coverage. And so practice these. This is something that I use occasionally is, you know, I need to you know, man up someone or maybe cross man. So let's say I want to just man whitehead up on number 13. Go ahead and press A, up, B, and now he's cross manned. And then I could go ahead and put Davis either on a blitz. Maybe I want him out on the hard flat. Uh, who knows? But definitely knowing how to man someone up is important and let's put david in a blitz or not a blitz a qb spy here's a particularly good tip to know guys if you ever have trouble with texas routes you want know to talk about texas routes like the the running back on an angle route from the backfield one way to stop it is to take an opposite side defensive end and man him up on the running back unfortunately i don't have a texas route right here but what will happen is uh the texas route will be guarded in the spot where people usually throw it the most basically it'll be guarded if it lets me control it won't let me control sue but basically right here through the middle 
that uh, angle route or that Texas route will be covered by the D lineman. Now, if your the if your opponent has time to throw, uh, the running back will probably get separation as that route continues out here. Uh, but you know, in that case, hopefully you have a zone out there. Maybe you can go and user it. But that text shot will be covered right here. Because what most people do is if it's just a linebacker in man coverage against the Texas route, the linebacker will come with the Texas route out here. And then on the break, it will just be open right here in the middle of the field. And people just throw it instantly. But again, if you take the D end, man him up on the running back, again, the D end on the opposite side, that is, then that will take away the Texas route in the middle of the field where most people want to throw it. And so that is how you uh, do an individual man coverage assignment. If we move to an outside corner, so we're, that was with a safety. Here is an outside cornerback. We get slightly different adjustments. You can see that we can do an outside quarter. We can do, uh, so outside quarter was right on the right stick, right on the left, or left, oh my gosh. Left on the right stick was outside quarter. Right on the right stick is deep half. Up is going to be man coverage again, and then down is going to be blitz. On the left side, we can put him in a hard flat, soft squat, cloud flat, or outside third. All three of those, hard flat, soft squat, cloud flat, those are all your blues, uh, your light blues, that is. And then you've obviously got your deep blue right here. If we've got slot cornerbacks, it is a little different. We cannot put them in anything deep over the top. You notice that there's no option for a slot cornerback to be on a deep half or an inside third or an outside third or anything like that. But we do get a vert hook right here, which can be very useful at times. We also get the seam flat and the curl flat, two purples. And then of course on the right side, we still get blitz, QB spy, man coverage, and bluff blitz. So let's talk about bluff blitz now. This is also something you could do uh, with D linemen who are gonna have even different adjustments there, but it's the same on the D lineman in this case. The bluff blitz is basically going to be a three rec. And so if you guys don't know, a three rec is a yellow with some man matching principles, but they're going to start off the play as if they are blitzing. So initially, if I if we hike the ball, watch Sue, he's going to uh, sometimes engage for just a second. And right there, that was pretty bad logic, probably because Sue maybe has a really low pass coverage rating. But basically what often happens and that I've uh, thrown interceptions to before with the bluff blitzes is they engage for just a second and then they drop back to the middle of the field and they're supposed to, supposed to, in theory, man match anything that kind of is in this box. So like what I'm used to seeing with a three rec is maybe he would have trailed 13 for just a second. And then by the time it got like, uh, you know, to about where he's at right now, kind of getting outside the hashes, then that three rec would kind of leave him and the three rec would kind of return to the middle of the field. In this case, Sue kind of like sprinted back in for some reason. I don't know why. Uh, that's just the state that defense is in right now. But that's what bluff blitzes are doing is when you put a bluff blitz on somebody, um, when you're D lineman or even on a slot cornerback, uh, so Davis out here, they're going to fake like they're blitzing and then they're going to, to drop back. And so this is actually an interesting one right here is the play art. The play art for a bluff blitz from a slot corner actually looks like a blitz. So that can get a little confusing for you. But if you look, Carlton Davis, I'm putting him on a bluff blitz right now. It looks like a blitz assignment. But if we go ahead and let it play, watch the slot corner. He actually ends up going into coverage. And he man matched on the guy right in front of him. Basically as if it was a man assignment, even though he was actually on the bluff blitz. And so bluff blitz can situationally be really good. Uh, I would... I typically put those on if you're seeing lots of you know routes over the middle that are getting open while you're like say you're using and you're having to cover like the deep middle and then routes over the short middle keep getting open sometimes i take a d lineman and just kind of throw them on a three rec to try and help out with that i can't really think of any other times i use a three rec uh that's probably it but it's situationally really good it looks like our three rec play art is stuck on the field i'm gonna go ahead and let it play again just more practice mode things and so that was the bluff blitz, and it looks like Randall Cobb's going to take that for a touchdown. So that was the bluff blitz. Let's continue and go through the linebackers and the D linemen. Thank you for bearing with me, guys. I know this is a lot, but let's go ahead and press A, and you can see that we have even different adjustments for uh, the middle linebacker. We could drop him back to a middle third. 
by pressing, you know, again, we're pressing A or X for all these. That was up on the left stick. Going left will put him on a hook curl. Going right will put him on a curl flat. And going down will put him on a mid read. Uh, but looking at the right side, you see we still get the man coverage, QB spy and blitz. And then, of course, we've got hard flat as well. And so moving on to uh, outside linebackers, I think it's going to be pretty much exactly the same as what we've seen before. If we move down to uh, defensive ends, you can see that we can actually put defensive ends into vert hooks or into bluff blitzes. And we can also put them into curl flats, seam flats, or hard flats. And then defensive tackles have uh, some interesting uh, uh, choices for the abilities. Let's move Levante David out of the way. So for D tackles, you can't put them in any seam flats, hard flats, or anything like that. But you have vertical hook left by doing up on the left stick. You have vertical hook right by going down on the left stick. You have hook curl left by going up on the, or sorry, left on the left stick and hook curl right by going right. And you can see that the, the vert hooks and the hook curls uh, play very similar spots. And once again, for another video, if you guys want, I will go into the exact logic of each one. And I'll be totally honest right now, I probably am using hook curls and vert hooks uh, interchangeably, uh, maybe when I shouldn't be. The reality is I don't think either really plays how they're supposed to, uh, but maybe if I learned the difference, maybe I would have a little bit better results from using them. And then of course, on the right side, we get all four of the same things we've been seeing, man coverage, QB spy, blitz, and bluff blitz. So those are all the individual adjustments. And so that is a lot and it takes a lot to learn. And I'll be totally honest, I still don't know exactly for like my safety, what every single adjustment is. Like I would have to look for a sec to remember inside quarter is out on the right stick. Cause I'm just, I'm not putting him on an inside quarter very often. And so you definitely will learn the ones that you know you need, even though it's best and something that I need to work on as well. I want to have all these memorized, have them be second nature. The reality is start with the ones you know you need. Start with deep having, right? Deep having is a very important one. And so let's go ahead and, and just let this run real quick. Randall Cobb might have another touchdown on us. But like deep having is very important, especially against gun bunch. If your opponent comes out in gun bunch, you want to, in, let's say you're in a cover three. So we're in Mike Blitz three right here. You want to be deep having the side of the field with the bunch. So let's pretend that the bunch is on the left side. You need to know that to deep half, that outside corner who's currently in that outside third. I need to double tap. Well, we're gonna get that in just a second, but we need to go over to him, press A, and then we're going to press right on the right stick. And now he's in a deep half. And so this is gonna kind of segue into the advanced adjustments, because if you saw right now, I, I kind of got a little ahead of myself. I was about to show you quick adjustments, but the reason some people really hate doing individual adjustments is they hate clicking around to each player to do them. Cause okay, I gotta, you know, click to this guy, press A, do my thing, go to this guy, press A, do my thing. And it's a lot. And also here's a little side tip guys. And I think a lot of you may know this, but you might not. When I came back to Madden in Madden 19 after a 10 year break, I did not know this. Some people will cycle through their players just by pressing B or circle to be like, okay, I'm on my linebacker now. I need to get to my safety. They'll just press circle or B two or three times to get their safety but you don't have to do that you don't have to keep spamming through and oh i missed my linebacker i gotta go around again that's how i was doing it because that's how it used to be in the playstation days or the ps2 days maybe it wasn't and i just didn't know this method I'm about to show you maybe that was always in the game but the way i changed players back in the day was i cycled through people and i'm pretty sure there are some of you still doing it but what you can do is you can actually just point the left stick at the player you want to change so if i want to uh, go to the safety. I just point the left stick at the safety and press B or circle. If I want to go to the right safety, oh, come on, game. Well, we're going to watch. Uh, oh, I thought it was going to be another Randall Cup touchdown. Never mind. But like, let's say I want to go from the left safety to the right safety. I'm just going to press right and go and, and just press B or circle. So right now I'm just pressing left and right, left and right, left and right, left and right. Want to go to the middle linebacker. I'm going to press diagonally down to him. And so it's so easy. I can make a little triangle right here. It's so easy to click on the player that you want. I messed up the triangle, oops. Sometimes you miss, sometimes you miss, but most of the time you can get it right. And so definitely practice that. Definitely practice cycling through the players that you want to control because this will save you so much time with individual adjustments. Again, I, maybe I'm having just too much fun clicking on players, uh, but there are those of you out there 
who are just spamming beer circle to cycle around through every single player and you need to just be using this just point your left stick in the direction that you want to change to and just press circle or uh, b and change that player now we're going to the advanced adjustments now and so we basically have seen the foundation of these in that if we go and click on an individual player we press a or x we have all of these different adjustments but the issue is what if we want to go and put the outside linebacker on an assignment and so i'm on shaq barrett i want to put him on a curl flat but then my opponent hikes the ball and now all of a sudden well do i want to go user the middle with with a less than ideal user in shaq barrett or do i just want to like play his assignment for him and just drop out here and so it's really not ideal to come off of your user and hopefully you guys are are using someone in the middle of the field trying to take away routes that are coming open and so if you want to take away the risk of not being clicked on your user when the ball is snapped you need to use quick adjustments and this is where it gets really advanced because i resisted this for so long but it makes such a big difference and so what quick adjustments allows us to do is make all those same changes without actually ever clicking off of whatever player you want to be on and so if i want to go put that safety on the left side in a curl flat or something i can double tap y and what that does is so if i press y once remember that pulled up our coverage adjustments well if you press y again see it says quick adjust i can press quick adjust and now all my defensive back icons have been pulled up i'm gonna press a to select my safety on the left side and now it pulls up all of his individual assignments anyway and now i can press right on the left stick and i've now put him on a curl flat and the entire time i was clicked onto the guy i want to use in the middle of the field so let's say oh he was on his deep half and my opponent quick snaps me so where i i go and i click on a before i get that assignment off my opponent snaps the ball i still have control of my user and this is really important for taking your defense to the next level because if you are clicked onto someone wrong if you're down the d line like oh i want to put this guy on a a bluff blitz but then all of a sudden your opponent snaps the ball well now you're usering and dominic and sue and you're not going to really do a whole lot of good with that i mean in, in theory you could but it's very less than ideal let's go ahead and let it run because that that play art got stuck on the field again but quick adjustments takes time but once you get used to it you won't look back you will you will say oh my gosh i can't believe i was clicking over to individual players and so i want to put shaq bear on the right side on a curl flat if i want to bring up the linebacker icons i'm going to double tap uh right on the d-pad and because remember right on the d-pad once was our uh, linebacker adjustments and in the bottom left one of the things we didn't look at before it says quick adjust it says right on the d-pad again so essentially uh from you know from just your uh regular play art you can double tap right on the d-pad it pulls up your linebacker icons so now i can press a for shaq barrett i can uh well let's put him on a hard flat this time left on the left stick and now he's in a hard flat over there and so same thing on we'll put jason pierre paul on the right side into a curl flat double tap uh right on the d-pad i'm pressing right on the left stick now he's in the curl flat and so one more time with the d-line we're going to double tap left on the d-pad and select your guy put him in his assignment i can put him in a vert hook over there i could put him in a vert hook over there i can take vita vea put him on a qb spy and you see that we are just very quickly changing everything on the field and so uh you know if i was in a mike blitz zero this was uh something that uh, I should have shown at the beginning of the video unless I just forgot but let's say I decide I want to just do like a little cover one look I can go ahead and double tap Y select my safety and put him on an inside third I can go ahead and do the curl flat on one side I can go ahead and do the hard flat on the other side and now all of a sudden we've got a cover one look and depending on my zone drops uh maybe you know this guy's dropping deep and maybe uh the purple guy is dropping you know in a five yard flat to guard against the running back in a flat route and i say that well since i you know have the flat route covered maybe i just want my other safety oh, my my b safety maybe i just want him in a hook curl just kind of guarding his zone over the middle because i don't really need a manned up on the running back and then obviously there's no man on number 13 and so i'm gonna have to you know maybe watch him with my user if he goes on a streak or maybe a corner route maybe i just have to go in, well actually the blue should have the corner route if he's at like a 20 25 yard depth uh, but you know if he's like slanting over the middle or something maybe i just have to pay special attention to him with my user 
And so this is where quick adjustments are so important, guys. There is so much power in quick adjustments as opposed to individually clicking around to each player. Because if you try to click around each player, when you're playing against someone good online, they will snap the ball before you're ready. And then all these uh, eBooks you've got, all these YouTube videos you watch on different setups, you're not gonna have time to do them because you you don't know quick adjustments. And once you you know get caught too many times trying to click around, not finishing your adjustments, you might give up on that scheme because you say, I don't have enough time to make the adjustments. And they're just gonna stick to calling maybe stock plays and you're just not gonna get you know good stops on your opponents just calling completely stock plays out of your playbook. And so that's why quick adjustments are so incredibly important. Now guys, there's one other part of these advanced adjustments that I wanna go over. And let's go ahead and just get some uh, man coverage on the right side. I'm actually, let's go ahead and just uh, let this play play out because again, just something about practice mode, guys will kind of just get stuck and just give them a touchdown. I wanna get some just pressed man coverage on the left side to kind of show you guys this adjustment. So let's go ahead and just get in, uh, oh, we're already getting some pressed coverage. Beautiful. So there's one other thing we didn't ever click. Back when we pressed wire triangle to bring up coverage adjustments. Oh, there's two other things. The first is uh, the sticks. Let's go over sticks real quick. Uh, play the sticks. Some people say it makes you guys play to the first down line. If you go in the coaching adjustments, you will see that it actually says that playing the sticks is for resetting your zone drops to default. And so we've got all these you know funky zones. Let's go in Mike Blitz 3, you know, we, where we've got you know seam flats that might be man matching, or you know, we play some hard flats that could be playing the flats. Our zone drops, when we set those to five or 20 or whatever, our zone drops overrule that logic. But if you press Y and then press sticks for, you know, I'm pressing LB or L1, according to the note on the coaching adjustments, we have now reset those as if they were to default on this play. And so instead of the hard flats playing uh, the 20 or 25 yard drops that I'd be putting them at, in this case, once I say sticks, they're actually gonna play like hard flats. And so that is kind of a cool way that you can use zone drops, but also, you know, get the uh, zones to actually play how their default uh, logic would play without having to go and change your zone drops every single play. But now back to the other final adjustment, when we press Y or triangle, there's one more button down there. It is A, it says individual. And that is, we can give individual assignments based on it, it's really individuals on offense okay so i'm gonna press a and it's gonna pull up all the icons for the offense and so i'm gonna select Devonte adams in this case x and we have four options right here five options actually back off press shade right shade left so shade right shade left that's the same thing we saw before with the man coverage it's just that when we saw it before shade inside shade outside it would apply to the entire defense so if you don't want the entire defense to shade inside or shade outside. You just want that one individual uh, player to have their, the coverage on them shaded inside or outside. You could come here and use shade right or shade left. So if I press shade right, uh, it looks like in this case, the defender's not really going to react at all. Maybe if I press down, uh, maybe, actually let's, let's get man coverage real quick. Man coverage and then press down. So now if I press uh, individual and I do shade left, now he's moving. You see how he's moving just like he was before uh, when we were shading inside or outside now shading right or left will make him move just like we saw before there's another option though like you guys probably already saw we can press Devonte adams and we can press up on the right stick and that's gonna back him off so again let's say uh you don't want to give up a touchdown on a streak but you don't want to like you don't want to back off the whole defense because you're happy with pressing everyone else you can still come in and press and then and now this is just a practice mode thing uh to where you know he's not going to press now but you can go ahead and press wire triangle press a press Devante, and then press up on the right stick and now now since i moved him you know he's not really responding anymore but you saw before that he backed off when we did that and then same thing uh go ahead and press wire triangle a select your receiver and then press down on the right stick would we'll just do the opposite so these individual assignments are very interesting and there's one final one i want to show you guys i'm going to select Devonte one more time and at the very bottom it says a for spotlight receiver 
So I'm going to go ahead and press A. And now Devante has a circle underneath him. And basically what that means is your defenders are going to pay special attention to him as he runs his routes. And I don't recommend this all the time, but if your opponent has one particular player that they keep going to, that they keep gashing you on, go ahead and try the spotlight player. And I want to say that it'll just make the defenders react a little bit better if they're in the vicinity when the ball is, is thrown to that player who you spotlighted. I don't really ever see spotlight player come up uh, in ebooks and defensive game plans. So I don't really think it's a true game changer. But if you know that someone is just gashing you with one player over and over again, it certainly can't hurt to spotlight that one guy to at least force them to go to someone else. Most people online that I run into are pretty good about spreading the ball around and taking the open player. And so I don't usually use spotlight receiver, but it's in the back of my mind. It's another tool on the tool belt where if you have someone who's just completely annihilating you with one single player, the spotlight receiver option is there. And if you guys have used it, let me know in the comments below. I would love to hear. I've never heard anyone actually using it, but if you've used it, I want to hear about it in the comments below. But anyway, guys, those are all the defensive adjustments in Madden 22. And like I said at the beginning of the video, these are all tools at your disposal to run your defense exactly how you want, assuming that the defenders actually do what their assignment says they're supposed to do. And of course, that is a little bit of an issue right now in Next Gen Madden. But ignoring that, the ability to just take different players, put them on whatever assignments you want, and knowing what all these things things do and again if i if you guys want a video on how each zone plays then i will definitely add that to my list and get you guys that video soon uh but just the ability to understand all these adjustments whether it's shifting the d line or crashing them outside or a qb containing or all the quick adjustments that we saw or backing off the coverage or pressing the coverage knowing how to do all these and having them be second nature is so important if you guys want to play good defense and madden 22 defense is tough the reality is that even if you perfect all these, you're still going to be giving up points because defense is just really tough this year. But that being said, understanding all of these is the best way for you to have a chance at getting some stops. And if you just get one stop, maybe two stops, you've got like a 90% chance of winning the game. But anyway, guys, thank you for sticking with me this whole time. I know it's a lot of info, but I think it's all really important to being a better Madden player. If you enjoyed the video, please consider hitting the like button and subscribe if you want to see my upcoming defensive game plans, because I think we've got some really good schemes. I've been having a lot of success recently with these online, and I'm going to share everything with you guys completely free. And so subscribe if you want to see those coming out in the next week or two. Uh, we will be going all in on defense because defense is what people are having trouble with right now. We're going to do offensive tips again in the future, but right now we need to focus on defense. Uh, because myself and most people in the community, defense is our number one issue. And so if we can shore up defense, then we can go back to having a lot of fun on offense. But anyway, guys, that is it for the video. Thank you again for watching. I hope you enjoyed it, and I'll catch you in the next video.